Alright, what is going on guys, it's Optimize here, and I'm finally doing my velocity syncing tutorial. I'm going to be completely honest, I don't know why everybody wants my settings so bad, and like my, you know, method of syncing. Um, I, I, I appreciate that everybody likes my way of doing it, but it's a pretty basic way, and I pretty much I use a bunch of other styles, like, kind of combined. It's not really anything special. Uh, it's a pretty basic thing, so this shouldn't be too long of a tutorial, but I'm going to show you guys trick shots and um, sniping. Uh, I already synced up, like, not necessarily synced up, but I already lined up all the clips on all the beats that I want, so, um, just don't, don't, like, get tripped out by that. If you guys don't know how to do that already, in case this is, like, your first tutorial on Sony Vegas, um, yes, this is Vegas, not After Effects. If you're looking for After Effects, you need to go to the Dance channel. I'll put it in the description. Anyway, um, basically, you want to go through your clip, and you want to hit the S key on all of the gunshots, and then you want to place markers down with the M key on all the beats that you want to have shots on. Um, and you can do that, you know, going through the timeline, just hitting the M key on all these breaks in the music. You can see them in the waveform. You can also hear them, obviously. You want to get your gun sounds light up and everything. And I have, like, a cinematic or two with both these clips so you can guys get, like, a little bit of an idea of, you know, how that works and it incorporates. So, uh, basically, it's 300 to 50, 50 to 300 with fast and slow fades. It sounds complicated, but it's really not. So, uh, don't freak out. Your velocity is probably a different color. I have my Vegas color scheme to all have the same color blue for the tracks, and my velocity is white. Yours will probably be green. Don't flip out. It's nothing like crazy. It's just a different color. Um, anyway, so you want to right click your clip. First of all, I want to I want to make this clear. I've seen this in so many edits, and people ask me for advice on there. Like you know, it's like, what can I do to make this edit better? It's like first you need to sync your clips. Second, you need to disable resample. I can't get over this. Vegas forces resample by default. Um, I'll show you guys what I mean when they force resample. It's frame blending. It doesn't look good. Some people say, but it's motion blur. No, use motion. Use real smart motion blur. Disable resample. For the love of God. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you want to disable resample and then you want to put your velocity envelope. Uh, you right click on the clip, hover over insert, remove envelope, click velocity. You want to drag this line all the way up, double click and hold, drag this marker all the way to the very right of the clip, and then you want to just basically eyeball it for the two 50% markers. Um, and if you guys are saying, like, what if there's more than one beat on the clip that I'm syncing or like on the individual cut up part, I'll show you guys that too, don't freak. Um, and that's pretty much what trick shot syncing is too. So, you want to double click, uh, right click, and then hit 50%, and you want to do that on both sides, kind of like that. I don't really know how to explain that. Uh, and then you want to change this first curve, depending on what your clip looks like. If you want, if it's a cinematic, I recommend always doing fast fade and slow fade. Fast fade on the beginning, slow fade on the end of it. Uh, I pretty much recommend that all the time, unless you're doing super hard below, and if you, you guys will figure out what that is as you practice more with it. Um, for, for like the actual shots, sometimes you might want to do slow fade um, on the beginning, which will make him kind of scope out faster, and then he'll like suddenly you know get really slow. I'll, kind of sh I'll show you guys the difference uh, real quick. So this is just how I sync my cinematic right now. So I'll show you guys what that looks like on the clip itself. Excuse the terrible gunshots and music. Oh. So you get an idea, so I'll go frame by frame, you can kind of see like how fast he scopes out. But if I change this to slow fade, he's going to be scoped out a little bit sooner. So, like, right, I'll show you guys, like, a frame-by-frame frame dif difference. So that's, if we go slow fade, my cat needs to chill out. Habib, chill out, all right? Thank you. Anyway, so slow fade, you know, it just go it scopes out a little bit sooner. I don't ever recommend doing fast fade on the last keyframe. It just looks weird and is not necessary. Just leave it at slow fade. Um, and then if your clips don't line up, like, you can see he barely starts the aim animation, and then it starts the next shot. Just drag your keyframes out either closer or farther depending on whether you need more time in the clip or less time. Um, and if that's not really working the way that you want your curve speed, you don't want them to you know, start speeding up way back here, set the overall speed of the clip just a little bit higher to maybe 1.1 or 1.2. Uh, you can do that right click, properties, and playback rate, 2, why not. Uh, this is going to look weird because his capture card glitched up, but it's whatever. Um, and a lot of times, if it's a very consistent beat, you can pretty much just copy and paste your keyframes. So you can do that by copy and paste in attributes. Obviously, you're going to need to tweak them. Uh, oh, crap. You're going to need to tweak it a little bit because every shot, you know, the timing is a little bit different. Oh, my. Hold on. I need to chill. All right. Sorry about that. She's flipping out over, like, three-day-old food. I don't know. She's high or something. I don't know. So you're going to have to tweak it a little bit because you can see right here, he's scoped in for, like, a frame or two, and I don't necessarily want that. I want the first frame of the scope to be whenever he's actually on the shot. So I'll move the keyframes inward a little bit so that there's less time speeding up and there's more time being consistent 50 FPS, or not 50 FPS, but 30 FPS. Uh, make sure that your clips are 60 FPS because some people try to do this with 30 FPS and it's going to look bad. 
because when you set it down to 50% speed on 60 FPS clips, it's playing back half, you know, half the speed. And for that half speed, it's taking, you know, every other frame. Like it's taking, I don't know how to describe it necessarily. How to put it in words without making everybody sound, you know, making everybody all confused. So just make sure you have 60 FPS clips at least if you're doing this. Um, if you only have 30 FPS, I really recommend Twixter. Um, and if you're using After Effects, use Twixter also. You can use this method for Twixter as well. You just need to, you know, physically, you need to actually like change your curves uh, manually. But if you're using After Effects, you probably don't need this tutorial. Um, like I said, if you're using After Effects, I'll link my homeboy Zant in the description. He knows a lot about that. Um, so if there's more than one beat in the shot right here, like in this individual cut up part, like this clip, okay, this whole thing is one big clip, but this is a like video clip. Like, these are each their own clip, kind of in a way. That's really confusing. We'll, we'll call them snippets. Like this is, these are each little snippets. And if your snippet, quote unquote, has more than one beat, I'll show you how to line that up too. It's basically like two shots are together, but it's all in one snippet. So basically, you just put a 300% marker on every. Uh, you put a 300% keyframe on every marker, and then do your 50% like you would normally. And then when you get to the second one. Just pretend like that second marker is the very beginning of your clip, and just go 50. Uh, fast and 50 not linear sometimes you might have to change your curves uh, some just to fit you know the, the your song your style whatever it is you're doing um, you know sometimes if I want to do hold that um, when this the way that it's set up right now is it'll gradually speed up for a little bit and then gradually slow back down if you change this to hold it'll speed up just um, instantaneously it'll be playing back normal like half 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 and then all of a sudden it speeds up and then gradually slows down I prefer the speed up slow down it kind of keeps it a more smooth uh, flow throughout the video and throughout the sync of it so I'll show you guys what this looks like with motion blur uh, and, I'll talk, and I'll teach you guys about this whole adjustment layer deal in Vegas in a separate tutorial because I, I plan to do more of these because um, it's just a lot of people have recommended it and I feel like it's a, it's a more of a way to get in touch with you guys so uh, we'll just get this little ramp preview going on right now and I'll show you guys how to sync trick shots also Come on. <laughs> All right. So excuse the gun sounds. I just found some quick ones. Oh. So yeah, I mean that's just the syncing portion. Obviously, you're gonna want to add screen movement and stuff. And again, these these will all be like separate tutorials so that everybody can you know just watch what they need and you know all this other stuff. So you already, if you already know screen movements and effects and everything, this is literally the only part of editing you need to know. Then good for you. Um, I don't know. So now I'll show you guys how to do trick shots. It's not very different. Uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you go through and you split it on all the shots. Uh, you want to line them up with the beats that you want, obviously. Line my gun sounds up. My cat is on drugs. Um, and yeah, um, sometimes you'll have your clip will, um, you know. Okay, I'm trying to think. So say I want to start my clip right here. Like, yeah, that's not the start. I'm. I don't know, I'm bad at this, so like, there's like one or two frames that the clip doesn't line up, so say that the clip starts right here, and I want the shot to be here, but the um, spot where he shoots is way over here. Well, I'll usually just add another video layer and overlap them so I can see about how many frames I'm going to need to compensate for when I'm syncing. Usually they just make up for themselves and motion blur hides the tiny one frame, you know, mishaps or whatever. It's not that big of a deal usually, but basically when you're doing this, you can just do it exactly how I showed you. If there's more than one beat in the clip, just sync it up um, going from 50 to 300 back down. Um, yeah, like there's not a lot of difference between how I sync trick shots and feeds. A lot of times you're gonna have to move your keyframes more with trick shots because uh, a lot of times you're gonna want to line up different spots. Like I'll show you guys when I get to the kill cam that I'm gonna want to. Uh, when he pulls out the L11 here, it's gonna start right here, but I'm gonna want him like on the beat, kind of have him, you know, speeding it up, um, and then it slows down right there, so it's like you know, kind of synced up with the shot. So he pulls it out on the beat, and it just makes it look a lot better. Um, but again, just go through here and you know set your 50%. Uh, make sure you got your markers put down. Uh, I don't recommend trying to sync without markers. It makes your life so much easier because the keyframes will actually snap to the markers. And as long as your markers are actually in the spot that you want them, it's going to be pretty much a perfect lineup. Um, so yeah, this gets to be a pretty routine deal. Another thing I recommend just with Vegas in general is if you don't uh, just learn how to do Control S, Control Z, all the keyboard shortcuts. Um, I usually save on average every 30 seconds. Like right now, when you see me scrolling in and out and you hit that little click, that's me hitting a shortcut key um, to save because Vegas has crashed a lot on me in the past. It doesn't crash as much as it used to, 
but uh, I never want to worry about losing my work. So constantly, constantly, constantly save. It's I cannot even express that. Um, so right here, as you can see, this doesn't necessarily line up. He's way over here when he shoots, but right now at the very edge of the lead up part where he's not shooting at the very, you know the trick shot itself, it's not necessarily lined up. So I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna go, you know, maybe at the bidding and change this to a slow fade instead of a fast fade. It's gonna line it up so much better. See how much closer that is to the actual thing. This is a weird trick shot, but just ignore that because I have swag. Um, and then this part is usually pretty easy because there's nothing you're really lining it up to because you're a lot of times you just cut to the kill cam after this part on the next beat or you cut to a cinematic which is what I'm doing. Um, a lot of times I will use a combination of velocity and twixter just because it'll look really cool. Sometimes I'll sync this part up. Um, I never sync trick shots with the actual trick shot itself with um, twixter just because if you're going below 100% speed, you're going to start to get weird warping. Um, if you're in After Effects, you probably have Dish Drum and all the cool settings and stuff like that. Here in Vegas, I just, you know, I don't know. This is just works for me to use Velocity on the trick shot itself. Um, and then sometimes if you want this part to go really slow, kind of when he's pulling out the magazine, that's why I recommend Twixter. Um, sometimes I use that, but a lot of times it's just Velocity. Um, so yeah, pretty much every snippet is synced almost the exact same. There's not a whole lot of variation. Um, it really depends on your song. I like to use lots of consistent songs with like um, like the downbeats, um, like in 4-4 four four measure, if you guys know anything about music, or kind of like, those are consistent, but it has like kind of an irregular beat to it. Sometimes it's like pure consistency. Uh, it's all about personal preference, and there's a lot of variation with this. This is just the basis of it, of what you're going to want to do as far as just syncing in general. Um, so yeah, so we're going to go through here, and I'll show you guys what I mean by syncing parts of the trick shot to the song. So, I started the clip back here because I wanted this cinematic to sort of line up with it. It's not perfect, but I mean, it was perfect. It was like, not necessarily perfect, but it was a lot closer when I did it in the original edit when I was spending more time with it, but this is just for tutorial purposes. Uh, so as you can see, he pulls it, it's like kind of going kind of slow when he starts to pull it out, and then it speeds back up and then comes, you know, in a much more like, like in the down position, and then it slows back down, which gives it kind of like a cool effect. Um, like not necessarily affect like um, something you put on a shot, but like you know, it, like affects your audience or something. I don't know, something cheesy like that. Uh, and as you can see, it's starting the hit markers right there, but we're not on the shot yet. So we're gonna need to tweak something. Uh, we're gonna maybe make these keyframes um, a little bit closer in, um, just so that you know more time is spent at 50%. And you know, you just, it's a lot of trial and error, moving stuff around until everything lines up nice and pretty. And now we have practically a perfect sync because that's the next frame. You want to insert your velocity on this clip and put yourself at 50%, fast fade, sometimes slow fade depending on how fast your clip is actually playing. Um, let's just see, I'm using a stereotypical song. Do it. Don't judge me. Anyway, then we can go back to the fast fade and I'll show you guys what this looks like. The motion alert might look kind of weird because these are first, these are sniping settings, but it's whatever. I'm get a quick ring preview. And um, I recommend always working to where there's a way you can toggle um, on and off your final render settings in a way. So I, uh, when I first start an edit, I'll put the first clip in and I'll immediately disable resample on it, obviously, get my gun sounds in. Um, I'll put motion blur on and I'll put uh, my CC on. I'll like create a CC and all that stuff. And I'll put it on kind of an adjustment layer inside of Sonic Vegas. I'm going to show you guys how to do that and how to utilize it um, later on. So that's what you see me doing, muting and unmuting this top layer. That's my adjustment layer that has motion blur and CC and whatnot. And I usually work without it applied. And then when I'm doing RAM previews, I apply it so I can kind of see um, how the CC is going to affect like any like color intensive effects that I'm doing. But here's you know, like an example of this. So yeah. Baby, I can make that, make that brain. Oh. It's not the right gun sound, but that's not the purpose of this video. It's to show you guys how to sync, um, and that's pretty much the basis of it. That's pretty much all there is to it. There's not really a whole lot to it. Um, I'll show you guys maybe I might I might show you guys how I do with some of my cinematics, the um, the freehand cinematics. I don't know. That's a big part of what keeps my edits unique. This was already a big part of it, even though it's pretty basic because not a lot of people do it this way, but. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.